This is Postal 2, a pretty controversial video game from 2003 that is prominently banned in both Germany and New Zealand. But why? Well, because you can murder on the dance floor, you see? You can even piss on donuts and wait for police officers to pick them up and consume them. But this isn't even the worst part. Here is a list of difficulties you can play. There were originally 15 unique difficulties to choose from, but after the 20th anniversary update, Ludicrous Difficulty Mode was added. Recently, a fantastic Postal 2 content creator beat the game in Ludicrous Mode, respectfully known as a buff wizard. Well, I guess you can now call me a chuffed lizard, because I'm just thrilled to be picking this game up again. I'll be beating the game as a pacifist. That means we can't even be violent in a video game that has been previously banned in more than two countries. I need that juicy ad revenue, okay? Not only that, but I'll be playing the game on Insano difficulty. Because, well, I ain't a buff wizard. I'm just a sissy. The game starts us off at our trailer home, located in the heart of Arizona. I'm from Arizona. With five weekdays to go, we are met with different errands to complete each and every day. This is pretty much just an errand boy simulator. Oh, and this difficulty lets NPCs have guns. Guns! Guns! Despite being on pacifist mode, I have a gun of my own. Flipping people off is now a defense mechanism. Our first errand, the iconic picking up milk from your local and never returning home to your loving children. As this is a pacifist run, we lined up to purchase our milk and was greeted with a very friendly store clerk. Thank you for your unclean visit. Now get out and come again, please. And get out we did, as it was time to head towards our local bank to cash a paycheck that we have yet to receive. I climbed the top of the roof to peer through the skylight, like any normal customer would do. It was pretty busy in there, and I wasn't in the mood for lining up again. Who am I kidding? I didn't come here to cash my paycheck, I came here to rob the bank. I caused a great disturbance by shattering the skylight, prompting the customers below to grow increasingly agitated. Until all hell broke loose and they started killing each other. It was my time to shine as I made a break for it. Picking up a med kit on the way and flipping off the staff, we made it safely into the conveniently open vault, grabbing the bag of cash. The police, now aware of my crimes, have come to stop me in my tracks, but I kick the bookcase and get the hell out of there. Heading through the sewers, we find a vent that leads us out. This particular vent led us to two lovebirds, and at this point, I started to flip the bird at the lovebirds. We were now off to our next section of the game, but hang on, I've got a little bit of a secret here for you ladies and gentlemen. It's gaming loot. With our newly required body armor and full HP, we were ready for the protesters. Games are bad, they make you mad. Games are bad. With our foot through the door, we made it to our place of work. Late as usual, our boss fires us on the spot, and we collect our very last paycheck. But in the process, the protesters stormed the building. We fled quickly and with an orange cat politely opening the door for us, we were cutting through the alleyway when domestic t began before our eyes. We safely made it back home and with Monday successfully complete, we were left with zero deaths for the day. Tuesday has begun and it is now my favorite in-game day and a defining day for the series as it introduced signing petitions. Here is a quick rundown of each errand of today. Return a book at the library, venture to the Paradise Mall, and of course, confess our sins at the church. With a clipboard in hand, we were ready to annoy the city folk with a petition to make whiny congressmen play violent video games. I deliberately stood in front of one of the marching troopers and spammed left mouse click. Nothing was working until... Are you gonna sign this or will it be your surviving family members? <sighs> I guess that sounds pretty good. Thanks. Too bad none of her other band members survived to sign my petition. Oh, except for this dude. But, um, I'm pretty sure he did it. I'm pretty sure he killed them. Soon enough, we were off to the library and we were up against another protesting group. Navigating this labyrinth of a library has been a trial and probably the hardest challenge so far was finding the book return. I made it. I found my section. After screwing around some more, we finally got the opportunity to get some more signatures. Librarian's office, here it is. Another line? Oh. oh, that was easy, just a Dropbox right here. Upon returning our wife's book, the angry protesters began to set fire to the library. As if the library wasn't enough, we're faced with escaping a burning building while protesters are wielding rocket launchers. 
However, this won't phase us as our parkour skills come in handy, rendering this protester useless. <laughs> Using our gallons of happy juice, we spray in defense of oncoming gunfire. Whilst everything is on fire, we take the opportunity to get some more signatures. And at this point, we weren't getting any. <laughs> It was time to show off more of my parkour skills by crouch jumping onto this ledge and then jumping down unscathed and not breaking my ankles. We fled the scene quickly. And at this point, I've just realized something. I'm holding matches. It's Paradise Mall time. And it's also time to meet fellow child actor, Gary Coleman. <laughs> All we needed to do was get Gary Coleman's signature and in the process, line up for it. Or maybe I shouldn't. By triggering the protesters from the library, we managed to make an absolute cartoon out of the Gary Coleman meet and greet. <laughs> this was chaos, absolute chaos. And at this point, I was asking Gary Coleman to sign my petition and everything was set on fire. After bugging the child actor for more than 10 minutes, he finally gave in. Yes! <laughs> We killed two birds with one stone as Gary Coleman navigated back to his meet and greet station, signing off on his newly published book. Well, all that was left now was to confess sins. This is the police. Send out the former child actor. We have a warrant for his arrest. What you talking about, No! No, they're beating Gary Coleman! Say hello to my little friend! With Gary Coleman now arrested, or deceased, we yearned for simpler times, which included shoplifting donuts into our mouth hole. We were now on the road to church, but this is postal too. Nothing goes according to plan, as we are now faced with napalm heading in our general direction. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Exposed to the blast of napalm, we released happy juice to extinguish thy flame. But as we turned around, our exposed Johnson caught the eye of a fellow police officer. Heading for a pile of medkits, we were left being chased by the police until making it to the church. We made it but we didn't have any money to offer. So we stole the offering box. Holy shit, he's got a shotgun. The confessional booth was just around the corner, but when I went around the corner, there was no line to be seen. A blessing in disguise and with the line skipped entirely, our final errand of the day was complete. Or was it? You see, this next unskippable cutscene unveils something so outrageously crude that it could straight up get my channel deleted. Let's just say the church is under attack and we now have to escape. I never thought I'd say this, but holy hand grenades were being distributed by force and we really needed to get out of this place. We found the way out, but our attackers briefly forgot who they were fighting until I tried to make a dash for the main doors. Soon enough, they remembered who I was and Napalm was all over me again. Our Johnson Juice had come to the rescue as we barely made it out with just six health points left. We made it home, but all I want to say is this was in honor of Gary Coleman. You are sorely missed. Wednesday has arrived and we've got some crazy errands to do. Firstly, we need to vote. Secondly, we need to get a Christmas tree. And thirdly, we need to make the flowers grow. <laughs> By grabbing the armor at the start of the day, we need it for voting because shit gets a little wild in here and it wasn't me. While we navigate to the voting booth to cast our vote, we cross it off the list. But soon enough, you're under arrest. America. From voting to being nearly arrested after the fact, we made a run for it, but the police wasn't the only thing we were running from. <laughs> Having missed a near fatal elephant attack, we made it to the Christmas tree emporium and abducted our favorite Christmas tree. Not even five seconds later, a bunch of rednecks ambushed me, angry about their favorite Christmas tree being abducted by moi. Making a run for it, we cut left and held our ground. Doing some parkour here and there, other NPCs were keeping them distracted. By maneuvering along this bridge, we kept our health consistently high as we smashed down some knockoff McDonald's bags. Being cheeky, we crouch jumped to obtain a well-hidden Kevlar vest in preparation for our next area. Not only did we make it to the cemetery, but we made the flowers grow. However, the rednecks had caught up to us and we were now trapped in a box ready for set. I can't believe they've dressed me up in elastic. And that adds another errand to the list. On the run again, our Johnson Juice kept us in good company as we navigated our way through the brewery. The Rednecks' ultimate hideout, buried deep in the underbelly of Postal 2. We were desperate to escape this hellhole, and in order to do so, required sneaking around the enemy. As we cut a left and successfully pulled off some crouch jumps and grabbing some nearby health kits, more sneaking had to be done. 
Next minute, we were caught in a scene that would make a James Bond film run for its money. After successfully pulling off this jump, which totally didn't take 10 or so attempts, rude fingers were being sprouted left and right to combat the rednecks and their pursuit to marry me. As I got stuck on the stupid conveyor belt, our only way through this mayhem was to tank the damage like a boss. <laughs> I'm so fuck, I'm so sorry. While the silly fools lit themselves on fire, it was just me and my Johnson juice combating the flames. I could smell freedom at last. We were finally unchained from that godforsaken place. However, I was being laughed at in public for wearing elastic, so it was time to break into the laundry mat. Picking up our laundry is gonna cost us money and our clothes were literally just right there. So we just bloody nicked it instead. What in the goddamn? Did they patch this? Does this still work? There we go. Thank God. Wednesday is done and that was not fun, but now it's on to another one. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday is pain, I may be going insane, but here are our errands for today. Visit Meat World, pay a fine at the police station, venture to Napalm Industries, visit Crotchy at the mall, and maybe do some virtual reality gaming. We barge into Meat World and much to our surprise, no one was around to serve us. With a loading zone and an employees only sign at the counter door, we of course made ourselves welcome, to which we uncovered a dark secret at Meat World. We cut a right and kept rotating around the freezer rooms, avoiding the human butchers at all costs. And I've barely been scratched yet. With a rocket man around this very corner, the plan was to hug the hanging identified meat and slowly rotate using meat as cover. Collecting the stakes, at last the police raided Meat World. Our next step was to get arrested and this time actually go and spend time in prison conveniently where our next errand was. The police station, typically heavily guarded, could not stop me from smuggling a box of matches into my holding cell. Welcome to Arizona. With the police hot on our trail, we obtain a police uniform. The police, confused as to their new colleague, we found the evidence room and grabbed all our stuff, including the unpaid ticket. With half the errands finished and arriving at Napalm Industries, there was yet another employees only sign. I ignore it because I'm an officer of the law. As I explore the napalm industry with my fellow police colleagues, we were hit with the worst architecture I've possibly ever seen in gaming. The napalm was finally ours. But in typical Postal 2 fashion, of course something has to happen at the very last moment of the errand, and that is a man puking on a lake. Gamers, here is our ultimatum. We could take the speed run path or the chad run path. Now the speedrun path allows us to maneuver through the system meltdown with ease. Or we could do it the Chad way and piss directly up, running through the fire. While the Chad path is certainly much longer, it gives us that Indiana Jones feeling. By improving our parkour along the way, a soul NPC awaits us. A noble man pointing us to the exit. No Jeremy, don't do it! But I promise. Losing Jeremy was tough. We only knew him for about 10 seconds, but good news is we escaped, ready for them all. By squeezing through a gap in the fence, we were faced with virtual reality. Could this really be a feature for Postal 2? Steamy? What? We had stumbled upon a grand reopening, a physical gaming store with games like Gary's Mod, Doot 4, and Seeker Strike Global Bliat. And I have to line up. You know what? Fuck this. Nah, you know what? I'm out of here. Screw this. Screw this virtual reality. Soon enough, we met up with Crotchy, which had the balls to tell me all his dolls were sold out. Being the pacifist police officer I am, we seeked out to investigate the back rooms. And no, not the scary video game, the literal back rooms to find one last Crotchy doll. Backup arrived and my police crew seized the illegal dolls. I am an officer of the law. This is a cringe free zone. But there was only one illegal doll in my way. The real one. Crotchy, frustrated about his stolen doll, spawned a boss health bar on the top of my screen. Is this where my pacifist run ends? How could I take out Crotchy? By just getting my colleague to do all the work. It was over. Thursday was finally over. We fled the scene and made it back home. It was time for one last day. It's Friday, and here are our final three errands of today. Get Alternator, a car part that'll be obtainable at the junkyard. Then off to pick up a package and wish Uncle Dave a happy birthday. I also forgot to mention no more Johnson juicing. Ah. I think we might have gonorrhea. We also have a new vest that can be picked up at the start of the day. Trust me, 
We will need it with all these extra enemies on these bloody rooftops. This particular neighborhood is infested with enemies left, right, and center, so we're gonna need to maneuver around these- <laughs> Avoiding imminent death and scaling the hill, we had to pay for our package on pickup, which was low-key kinda rude. I take that back. I'm kind of glad I paid someone- that will be my last explosion meme in this video, I swear. Anyway, the building has gone into lockdown and we jumped over the counter to flee. Flipping off the office staff, we seeked refuge to pick up more body armor. That man is ordering a soda. The whole way, or as I like to call it, the wag your finger and fucking runway, because I got extremely lucky here and managed to successfully pull off a shortcut. No freaking way that worked. Jewel wielding my wagging fingers, we made it unscathed. Not really. I had to go get some donuts. Well, I stole them from this lady. Full health and a belly full of donuts, we find another hidden vest in preparation for the junkyard. What do you mean I need to purchase the alternator? Screw that. We pass the keep out sign and start frantically looking for the alternator. Bingo. How easy was that? One more errand to go. You think that was gonna be easy? No, no, you see, I got Mr. Burns hounds on me right now. And we barely make it out the junkyard alive. Onwards and upwards, covered in bites, we take the garden path up to see our good old Uncle Dave for our last errand. Too bad Uncle Dave has got himself into a bit of mischief with the police hot on his tail. We make it onto Dave's roof and through the fiery ceiling. With the police about to ruin my uncle's birthday, I see him one last time. I give him one last gift and then we are off. Police raid the compound and I'm caught in a crossfire, literally, as I'm burning and I can't use my Johnson for juice. I frantically waved off into the next room and soon enough triggered an explosion with my Johnson on fire and not even allowed to use my juice for obvious reasons. My health was dangerously low until two med kits on a table saved my ass. Everything settled down and I proceeded to flee from my uncle's compound, never to look back as the apocalypse has begun. The weekend is coming. The sky has changed, it's raining cats but not dogs, and home is where we will be. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Postal 2, a full pacifist run with a total of zero deaths. Okay, okay, maybe a few deaths here and there, but please, you, you gotta hear me out here, okay?